a man in the ditch and living with purpose. Jesus' parables about the good Samaritan, the prodigal son, and the home built on sand are more than just entertaining stories. In fact, Jesus' parables are so powerful and their messages so universal that they are known throughout the world to both believers and non-believers. Dig deeper into these earthly stories with heavenly messages as she brings Jesus' parables to life and we discover what living for his kingdom is all about. Stand firm in Christ during trying times learn what will happen when Christ returns and how it relates to your life today. Walk through Daniel's visions to help you understand the symbolism and battle to come and more importantly you'll learn about the wonderful and ultimate victory you'll one day witness with your own eyes. Raise to new life. If you are a Christian, it's a serious misunderstanding to think of yourself as having both an old and new nature. We do not have a dual personality, assuming the dual nature of the believer could easily lead one to excuse all kinds of sins by blaming them on the old nature. The popular theological concept of the old man and the new man fighting each other is not bibli biblically accurate. Personally, I think there is a plenty of bad news in the world and though I am not sure why Christians seem to be wired for it, yeah, bad news sells, I guess. But the good news is that you don't have to buy it, particularly when it uh, comes to who you are in Christ. A lot of bad news about our identity comes from a good dog, bad dog analogy. It goes like this. Your nature is like two dogs, a bad dog and a good dog. In every tempting situation, the dogs get it in a fight to see who is going to win. You just hope the good dog wins so you don't make a bad choice. And to be on the safe side, it's best to avoid any tempting situation at all. Let, lest you risk feeding the bad dog, you'll set yourself up to fail at least half the time. You'll never find victory over sin. The truth is that the bad dog is the dead dog. He's in the past freed, freeing us for transformation today and promising an incredible future. Like the rest, we were by nature the deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus in order there that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. The choice is yours. How do you see it? When temptation comes, will you see two dogs fighting to an uncertain conclusion? Or do you see yourself alive with Christ, seated with him in the heavens? Stop, think, meditate, and then rest in it. I am telling you, it makes a huge difference. Holy Spirit, I am so thankful that you live in me, not a couple of dogs. I rest in your promised 
presence. I surrender to your strength and your peace when temptation comes my way. Thanks for this good news. Amen. Where is your focus? The greatest truth we can ever be told is that our old self has gone. I can deal with the body of sin only as I realize that my old self has gone and I have a new self. This is the most striking and amazing truth. Yin and Yang, good dogs and bad dogs, the force and its dark side. I am telling you the Christianized version of Taoism isn't just wrong, it sets our minds on the wrong thing. Think about it. If we were constantly worried about some sort of battle going on inside of us, we are constantly focusing on ourselves, right? Our thoughts sound like this. I can't give it, give in. I have to win this war that rages within me. I have to get my act together. I have to suppress the bad part of me so that the good part of me can show Jesus. Jesus, help me. Sure, this looks pretty precious on the outside, but in reality we have been tricked into a self-centered struggle to try to do what's right, rather than a Christ-centered celebration of what he has already accomplished on the cross. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Interesting, isn't it? The death of our old sinful self can change the focus of everything. Where is your heart set today? Christ, I praise you for the death of my sinful nature with you on the cross. Shift my focus away from who I once was, but I uh, but am no longer. Set my heart on you, reigning in grace and righteousness with the Father. Amen. It all starts with what you think. Before the believer came to Christ in saving faith, the old man in Adam, under the total domin dominion of sin's power, was who we really were. After we came to Christ, the new man, the new woman, the new creation in him, having been set free from sin's reign, in, is now who we have truly become. Learning to live in Christ is not a matter of trying, it's really a matter of thinking, then trusting. According to the New Testament, our problem is that we do not truly realize who we are in Christ. But we still go on thinking we are who we are, we were. Did you get that? The Apostle Paul brings up the problem in different ways in his writings. Do not lie to one another since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Please note that the new self is being renewed in knowledge. The more we understand this and act on it, the more we facilitated the new experience of our new self in Christ. No, we are not a hybrid of old and new, sinful and holy. We are new and holy in Christ. His divine power has given us everything we need for a goodly life through our knowledge of Him 
who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through this he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. Notice again that we are given everything we need through our knowledge of him. Are you being transformed by the renewing of your mind about your true nature in Christ? It all starts with your thinking. Father, I don't want to be conformed to the Taoist thinking of the world. Renew my mind, transform me according to what is true about my true identity and my new self. Amen.